Hello there, my name is Madeline. Welcome back to my channel, Greenwood Dwelling. I am so excited to share this video with you all. I am going to be making a themed meal for the Game of Thrones finale viewing that I am having tonight. So I know that we are incredibly late to the Game of Thrones train and I myself had watched many of the first seasons years back when they were coming out. But my boyfriend and I have had been watching it currently. Yes, in 2024, we started Game of Thrones and we're watching the finale episode this night. And I had this really cute, in my mind, idea to make a themed meal. Luke said that I was a huge nerd and I am, but that's okay because it's fun. It's fun to be a nerd. So come along with me on this day while I'm making a themed dinner for our final viewing of Game of Thrones. What you're seeing me make here is some cheddar and chive sourdough discard biscuits. These turned out so delicious. Oh my gosh, so good. And we're going to use these to top our chicken pot pie. So my idea around this meal for the Game of Thrones finale is because there is a character in Game of Thrones named hot pie and if you know me and you know game of thrones i am hot pie like if there were all of these circumstances with fighting and wars and all of that like there is in game of thrones i would be hot pie just hang back in the kitchen in the bakery and trying to live my best life there, not getting killed. So I really relate to Hot Pie. <laughs> and um, he's really a minor character. I actually always end up loving like the really, really minor characters the best in these types of shows. Pretty much in every show. But anyways, I really loved Hot Pie. Like he was just a cutie. And um, he is me. So I'm making this chicken pot pie in honor of him. I guess it's kind of weird to be making a meal based off like a super, super minor character, <laughs> but um, it, I feel like there weren't that many other themed food items that I could think of that I was really being called to. So I am making this like rustic chicken pot pie. It was really good. It was super hearty and filling and it actually ended up lasting us for like lunches and dinners throughout the week as well. So really happy that I ended up making this. We actually also used a few of the biscuits that morning for breakfast sandwiches because we didn't really have any bread to be used for it. And I'm like, oh, I actually have these biscuits in the fridge. So we used these for that purpose as well and super super good would definitely recommend using these for breakfast sandwich vessels if you're looking for something new and fun to do for that and it kind of has a springy element so i was going for like game of thrones plus springy vibes and with the cheddar and chives i just felt like it kind of gave it just a little bit of a spring freshness um, feeling to the meal.
Okay, so while I am making the rest of these biscuits, I want to talk a little bit about the finale episode. And I do not want to give any spoilers, but it is 2024 and it has been so long since it, the finale came out that I feel like I can talk a little more freely about it. And I somehow managed to escape all spoilers throughout the whole, you know, many years since the finale came out and while I was watching Game of Thrones. So I think it's okay if I talk about it. But if you don't want to hear any spoilers, I would just like mute it or skip or I don't know. But I'm going to be talking about it a little. The main struggle that I had with that last season and especially the last maybe two episodes were that there were a lot of things that the characters did that I just felt like were not in their initial nature throughout the whole rest of the show. It's just like there were actions taken and things done that just didn't align with who they were to their core throughout the entirety of the show prior to those last two episodes. So a few of those things to me were one, the unnecessary coupling and romantic scenes for Arya and for um, Brienne and Jamie. I just didn't think that these were vital to the plot really that interesting or in either of their true like characters it just I I liked these characters being so interesting regardless of a romantic storyline they they didn't need that it's it wasn't an important thing to them throughout any of the show I mean, I guess Brienne a little bit. She does touch on some things, but I just, it just really bothered me. Like with Arya, it's like, okay, like, no, I, uh, I, I just really did it like that. I'm just like, no, that was not for me. And I really like a lot of like the romance and stuff, but it just, that bothered me. That's just not Aria to me. And so, and I understand that she's getting older and in the show and that's kind of why, and you know, they were about to go to war. And so it's like, she's, she doesn't know if she's going to live or die. Yes. She wants to have this experience. I get that, but I just still, I didn't like it. I just felt like that would not be what was on her mind before the night of this battle. Anyways, I also felt that way with Jamie and Brienne because throughout their the whole show, I loved their friendship. I thought that was one of the best storylines throughout the whole show was their friendship. I just really loved it. It was like pure, there was conflict because of who they were supporting and who they loved outside of their friendship. But I just loved their friendship and I wish that it had stayed that way. I felt like there was really no reason for them to hook up. I just, oh, I hated that. And then he, he left like immediately after. And, and I think that kind of bothered me too because I throughout the show and and obviously they want you to feel this way but I was really warming to Jamie I really liked him in the end like he had his faults yes many (laughs) but he had this side that you really rooted for and I think that's one of the best like qualities in a character is they're not all good and not all bad there's like a little bit of both and that's probably why Tyrion is my favorite character of the whole show but moving on from that I just really didn't like um their romance and and it was all just for him to go back to Cersei and 
a part of me wanted him to like completely abandon her, but I guess that isn't really in his nature either. I don't know. Those were just two things that I didn't love. And then obviously, of course, the like fully end of the show, which was the conclusion of who is going to be the ruler and who is the king. And I'll touch on that in a sec, my thoughts on that. I'm going to take a little break from ranting about the finale episode to share with you the next steps that I'm doing here. So I am now making the chicken pot pie filling. So I had the biscuits sitting in the fridge overnight covered. You want to make sure that you keep them in the fridge if you're not going to be using them right away because you want that butter to be really cold so that when it cooks it becomes very flaky. So I just had that in the fridge overnight and now I am cooking up some chicken that I've seasoned and I am then placing those off to the side once they're finished cooking and getting the filling veggies ready. So I have celery, carrots, potato, and onion that will be going in there. And if you had fresh herbs as well, like a fresh poultry mix of herbs or thyme or just rosemary, I would throw a little bit of that in there as well. Definitely some sage in here would be really good, but I just didn't have any fresh herbs on this day. So I just seasoned it with garlic powder, onion powder, a little bit of Italian herb seasoning, and obviously salt and pepper. And I did a little bit of red pepper flakes as well. So back to the matter at hand here, discussing the Game of Thrones finale. My number one issue with the finale, which I'm sure was a lot of people's as well. I guess I don't really know what many other people think about it, but I really did not like the decision of Bran being the king in the end. That just really was so anticlimactic to me. It was not interesting to me. And I just really, really hated that. And I don't know if other people felt the same way as me. I don't know if that was a popular ending, but I'm going to assume that it wasn't. I felt like it was just so bizarre and so out of left field that it just, I don't know, it just really irked me. I don't exactly know who I would have chosen in the end, but it made most sense to me to have John be the king because you're really going to go through all of that and kill Daenerys and then go to the wall? I mean, I know that, oh, that was so bad to me. I just, oh, I hated that. I really hated that. And I did read that Bran was going to be the king in the books as well. So I guess they did need to stick to that storyline, but that just was something that was really upsetting to me. I was just like, wait, no. No, this is not good. This is not okay. It just, 
I don't know. Like, I didn't necessarily think throughout the show that John was the most interesting character. There were far more interesting characters than John, but he was a main character. And I felt like Bran, yes, he was a main character, but I really hated his storyline of the Three Eyed Raven. I felt like it was really confusing and just really boring, to be honest. That, I don't know if I'm in the minority here, but it would just really bother me every time that he would talk about it. And then in the end for John to have gone through all that he went to, even went through, even though Bran also did go through a lot too. I'm not saying that he didn't, he definitely did, but it just, for me, I felt like it should be John because why else would you kill Daenerys? I mean, I know that she basically was a tyrant in the end as well. I don't know. I'm just ranting. I, I guess the moral of the story is like there really isn't a perfect ruler. And they all, even if you are rooting for one, have to recognize their faults as well. But Bran? I mean... No, it would have been so much more interesting if it would have left off with Daenerys being the queen because then you're kind of like, oh, wow, like she has her issues. She's not great as we all once thought. And it gives you an ending where you can foresee a lot of other tensions and things building in this world that could potentially still be interesting to watch even though there's shows not going on it could still be interesting to watch whereas with Bran I just feel like okay so now Bran just knows everything he knows the past and the future and everything's now just going to be good that's boring <laughs> I don't know if that's just me tell me what you think I could be completely misreading this whole thing that's just how I felt Let's take another little break from listening to me rant about the Game of Thrones finale. And I will tell you about the next step in our meal here. So I have my chicken off to the side cooling a little bit so that I can cut that up to put in the mixture here. And I have our veggies cooking on the stovetop, adding in my spices and seasonings.
Once your vegetables have softened, add in about four tablespoons, I believe it is four tablespoons of flour, I'll link the recipe below, and coat your vegetables in the flour and make sure that you're cooking out all of that raw flour. You don't want that flavor in your final dish. And then from there, we will add in some chicken broth as well as cream and let that cook all together and thicken. Make sure you're tasting it and see if you need to adjust any of the seasonings. Don't forget to add in the chicken that you cooked earlier. Just cut that up into smaller bite-sized pieces. And then in this step, add one cup of frozen peas and you're pretty much done with the filling. So we will just let this cook on the stove, thicken up and um, this will also allow the vegetables like potatoes specifically to soften up more. I think the potatoes took the longest to soften. So this step is pretty important. Just let this kind of sit all together, meld the flavors together. And um, once this is done, we'll just take it out and put it into a nine by 13 pan or sorry, not nine by 13. I'm putting this in an eight by eight pan and that is is what our next step is gonna be. Something that I really like discussing with people about Game of Thrones is who their favorite characters are and who they thought should eventually be the ruler. And I mean, this is something you can talk about from season one because in season one, you had all of those people who were vying for the throne. And yeah, those are two pretty basic questions, but they really get you thinking because I think a lot of people have very different views on the topic so it can be kind of fun to talk about and I would really love to hear who your favorite characters were and why and if they're more of like a controversial character and I would love to hear who you thought should be the ruler because in the first season I was actually thinking that Gendry Robert Baratheon's son would maybe be in the running for the being the ruler and he really wasn't at all even though um you know they used him sort of in a purpose with Stannis but 
yeah, I was like, oh, I think he's really going to be in the running and have have a shot at the throne because he should maybe be the rightful heir since he would be the firstborn son of Robert Baratheon. But then that wasn't really ever brought up. So I kind of moved on from that pretty quickly. I was like, oh, I think it's going to be Gendry. But no, it wasn't. Um, then from there, I really didn't, I did not like Stannis. I didn't think Renly had a good claim to the throne, even though truthfully, I think he would have been a really good king. I, I think he probably would have been a very good option, but he didn't really have a strong claim. Obviously, I never wanted it to be Joffrey. No, uh, Tommen, he was okay, but he was too young, I think, and he was, he just wasn't strong enough, but, well, I don't know, it just, I think it was just his age, really, um, I think he could have been a really good king, especially with Marjorie not being taken from him so early, um, but I don't know that that storyline was really sad the way that he ended up dying. So I felt kind of bad for him, actually. Um, I from there, really, I think I always thought that it was going to be Daenerys, but I, don't, I just don't know. I it's the, I've watched the final episode and I really don't know who has the best claim to the throne. I think John maybe had the best claim to the throne in the end, but, and I think he would have been a good king. I don't, I don't know. I really don't. It's, it's a hard thing to say. I mean, I don't think really any of the rulers were great options. Let me know what you think. I'm kind of just having a stream of consciousness moment here. I, I really don't know who. Maybe... Hmm. I, I really couldn't say. I think for me, it would have been John because... All that he went through on the show, he I think he really proved himself to be a good unifier. And I think that's a really good quality. And to go through all of the things that he went through in the end, in those last few episodes especially, and then killing Daenerys, it's like, why did you do all of that just to go to the wall? Like that was really bothersome to me. I didn't like that. So let me know what you think. And let's move on to some characters here that are our favorites. Before we discuss our favorite characters, I am going to share with you what I'm making here. So this is our dessert for the evening. These are lemon cakes. If you remember from the show, they reference a lot Sansa really loving these lemon cakes. So that is what I am making here. I have a recipe that I got from Bon Appetit, I believe it is, and it's for Sansa's lemon cakes, but I am adding a springy touch to them. I'm going to add a cream cheese frosting, a lemon cream cheese frosting with lemon curd on top and blueberries. So we're having our chicken pot pie and then the this will be our dessert, some blueberry lemon cakes. So these ended up making a lot of cupcakes and I ended up bringing a lot of them to work for my coworkers the following day and I got rave reviews. They said they were really good. So definitely make this recipe if you're looking for a good springtime dessert. 
these were super tasty and really nice and kind of refreshing almost. Now I want to talk about favorite characters from throughout the show. Um, I think I tend to have a lot of really weird favorite characters for a lot of shows because I tend to like the people kind of in the background more. So like for me, some of my favorite characters were um, Shay. Oh, I loved her character. So I liked Shay. I really liked Pod. <laughs> I know that one's so random. I really liked Pod. I liked, oh, the Princess Shireen. She was my favorite. She was so precious and so cute. And I loved her so much. When I was watching it the first time through, that is actually why I stopped watching because when they killed her, I could not continue. I was like, I have to be done. So absolutely loved Shireen. I really also loved Sir Devos. I don't know if that's kind of bizarre, but I just felt like he was so level-headed and he just had so many good takes on things throughout the show. And I just thought he was really funny how he like hated Melisandre and was just like, no, this is absolutely ridiculous. I just really found him super entertaining. I also really liked Lord of Eris. I thought his character was super interesting. And my all-time favorite character throughout the whole show, though, is Tyrion. I just absolutely love his character, adore him, and he will forever be my favorite. Also need to give an honorable mention for Lady Olenna, who I thought was so hilarious and one of my favorite characters in the show. finishing off our meal with a little mocktail. So you know that you cannot go through Game of Thrones without a proper drink. And I am making us a little mocktail here of ginger beer and pomegranate juice. So, you know, they talk about ale a lot in the show. So this is like my ode to that is the ginger beer. And then adding in the pomegranate juice makes it look like red wine so that was kind of the vibe that i was going for with this mocktail also kind of looks like blood and there's a lot of bloodshed so that is the end to our meal it was really good obviously you know watching the finale you heard my thoughts throughout the video but i really enjoyed this night it was so much fun I hope this video inspired you to really lean into the things that you love and lean into your inner nerd because it is just so much fun. Like planning this themed meal for the show that we spent so much time watching and really creating a vibe for that final episode was just super fun to me. And I hope that you do this with something in your life. Make a theme. Themes are very fun. And it doesn't hurt that everything turned out super delicious. Thank you so much for watching my video. I would absolutely love if you would comment your hot takes on the Game of Thrones finale below. And this is the fruits of our labor. It all turned out really, really delicious. Bye!